Hello again, Blenderheads. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create normal maps from the sculpted details on this Lapras model. Now, you're welcome to use your own model to follow along with this tutorial, but you can grab a copy of Lapras here from the link in the description below. That link will take you to my Gumroad page where you can download the model with all of this sculpted detail for free, although there is an option to leave a small donation if you want to help support the channel. Now, for really detailed models like those used in film and VFX, you'd probably want to be using displacement maps like we did in the last lesson with the Gremlin model. But for less detailed models, or models that you might be using in video games for example, we want to use normal maps. Currently, video games can't process displacement maps, or at least not to the same level that film can. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using the Lapras model from a previous sculpting video. This Pokemon model isn't nearly as detailed as the Gremlin model, and we should be able to capture all of this detail with a single normal map. For Lapras here, I used more traditional box modeling techniques to create the base mesh, which I then sculpted these high level details on. Now the plus side with this method is, I already have good topology, so we can completely skip the retopology stage. Now, if you've sculpted your character using, say, Dyne Topo or the Remesh tool, and you need to retopologize your character first, check out the last video called Everything You Need to Know About Displacement Maps, where we cover the reprojection technique using the shrink wrap modifier, as well as some of the normal cleanup stuff that you need to do. The other thing that you need to do before you can bake your normals is to have your UV set up. So if we just go over here to my UV editor and select the Lapras model, you can see that she already has UVs created. The reason we have to do this is Blender needs to know where on your texture that it needs to save this normal data. So unless you've got UV maps, it doesn't know where to save this pixel data. So if you're working with your own model, make sure that you get your UV set up first. If you're working with Lapras here, then we're ready to dive in and start creating our normal maps for both the shell and the body. Now, although we've got a UV setup here, so Blender now knows where it needs to save this pixel data, it doesn't actually have an image texture where it can store this yet. So we need to go back to our shader editor over here. And if I just drop back into material mode here, you can see that we do have a diffuse map uh, and we're getting all of this detail here from our multi-res. Let's just temporarily disable that. You can see we don't have any additional bump detail. Uh, so we need to create a new texture map. So if I just hold down Shift A and bring up our menu, I'll just do a quick search for an image texture and create that. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. So we're going to want to create a new texture. Uh, let's name this something impressive like Lapras underscore normal, because that makes sense. And then we need to choose how big we want it to be. In my case, I'm going to go with a 4K texture map, which is 4096 by 4096 and all the others can be left at default. So let's hit OK and now we have this data saved. Now if we hold down Control and Shift and left click on our texture here, you will need to have the Node Wrangler add-on uh, enabled for that. I'm pretty sure it comes default with Blender now. But if we hold down Shift and Control and click on that, you can see that Lapras turns black here indicating that yes we do have a texture, it just happens to be empty at the moment. So let's fill it with some data. First things first, let's turn back on our multi-res. And I'll just drop this back into solid mode so we can see things a little bit easier. Now our baking settings are actually under the render properties here. You can see I already have the baking tab open. Under the bake type here, we have a whole bunch of different options here, including normal, but because we're going to be baking from the multi-res modifier, we want to click bake from multi-res which will then reduce our bake types to just normals and displacements. Again, if you're looking at working in film, consider using displacement maps, but for our case, we're going to be using normals today. Now, take note of this little error message down here. Baking is performed using CUDA instead of optics. Now, if you're using the latest version of Blender, this is just a warning, and it kind of takes care of everything under the hood. But if you're using a slightly older version of Blender, this is referring to your graphics card. So if we just go over to our preferences under system, you can see I'm using an optics graphics card. Now Blender at the moment can't do these baking processes using optics, it has to use CUDA. So if you're using an older version of Blender, you may need to come back and manually switch this over to CUDA. You can see that error message now disappears. You can go ahead and bake your normals, switch it back to optics later. But again, if you're using the latest version of Blender, which I am, this all gets taken care of under the hood and you can safely ignore this message. Okay, I'm going to drop back to my material preview here, we'll get back to our black texture, and I'm going to hit bake to start baking our normal maps. Now in this case, this isn't actually going to work for this. 
you can see that Blender has created a normal map, but if we zoom in, you can see that it's just kind of this default bluey purple sort of color. Uh, it doesn't have any data in it. That's because we didn't have our multi-res modifier set correctly. So if we just jump back to our modifiers here, to create either normal maps or displacement maps, Blender needs to compare two models. In this case, it's doing it all under the multi-res. You only need the one model, technically. What it's doing is comparing the viewport level to the sculpt level. And in this case, we've got them both set to four. So it's comparing apples to apples. It won't be able to generate any data. So to make this work properly, let's just drop back to solid mode so we can see a little bit better again. We need to lower our viewport level. Now, the easiest way is to just kind of lower that down to zero and compare the lowest level to the highest level. Generally speaking though, I like to set my viewport level to one. You can see that it smooths out the mesh slightly here and although we will probably lose a small amount of detail in our normal map doing this, it also smooths out the normal map slightly, which I found helps get rid of some glitches. So I'm gonna leave my viewport level set to one and my sculpt at level four. And if we go back to our render settings here, we can now, let's go back to material preview so you can see this when it generates and let's once again hit bake. And you can see now that we get a whole bunch of information. So this is now working properly. I'm just gonna go and isolate Lapras here. Now you may notice that there's a couple of little defects in here, like for example, down the center of the shell. And I think I noticed something up here around the horns where it's just behaving a little bit strangely. We're getting some kind of weird lines. That's because we need to set our textures color space. At the moment, it's set to sRGB by default. What we want to do is be able to set it to non-color data for normal maps, but at the moment we can't do that. These settings are locked until we've actually saved this texture out, uh, out to our desktop. At the moment it's only inside of Blender and if we were to close Blender we would actually lose this, uh, this texture. So I'm just going to go back to my image editor here, make sure that I have the Lapras normal selected and you can see there's all of our detail. So let's now go image, save as, and I will save it as Lapras underscore normal. I'll put it underneath my textures folder with everything else. You'll get all of these textures um, with the download as well. So let's go and save that. Give that a second. And when we go back to our node editor here, you can see that the color space has unlocked. We can now set that to non-color data and we get a slightly different result. And you can see that some of these defects have fixed themselves. Now at the moment we've just got our normal map plugged into the viewer node here so that we can see it in the viewport, but we ultimately need this plugged into our principal shader. So to do that, first of all, let's go and grab our mapping node here, which is already set to UVs uh, so that we can get our diffuse texture working. We can take that now and plug that into our vector over here. That'll just quickly reset. And now we want to create a normal map node. So once again, go to our textures, type in normal, Make sure that you pick normal map, not normal. They are slightly different things. And then we just need to plug our color data into the color slot and our normals into the normal. And then if I hold down control shift again, I can select our material. And you can see that we're now starting to get some kind of bump detail here. And if I just disable the multi-res, uh, you can see that it is in fact our normal map doing this, not the multi-res. So if I set that to zero, you can see it disappears, set it to one, and it pops back in. So now that we've got all of our information stored in our normal map, we can delete our multi-res. First, before you go and delete something like a multi-res or any kind of step that you can't go back on, make sure that you go and save an additional copy. So I will save this as normal maps underscore two, because once we delete this, we can't get it back. Uh, so make sure that there is a backup copy. I'll now delete that. And that gets the normal maps created for the body. Now, Lapras here is still kind of fairly low poly. So in my case, I'm actually gonna go and add a subdivision surface just to kind of smooth that out and uh, make the model look a little bit nicer, a little bit less chunky. And that's all there is to creating a normal map. So let's quickly run through that one more time. Uh, but this time, let's use the shell. So firstly, we'll need to create a new image texture to store all of our data. Remember that you will need to have UVs for Blender to know where to store the data correctly. Let's name this one shell underscore normal. And again, let's leave it at the 4K resolution. 
Then you need to go to your multi-res modifier and make sure that your viewport level and sculpt levels are set correctly. Again, I like to use level one just so we get a little bit of smoothing and then the sculpt at whatever the highest level of sculpt is. In this case, it is four for me. You can then go to your render settings and making sure that the bake from multi-res is ticked uh, and choosing your bake type, in this case normals, we can hit bake. And once again, we get our normal map generated don't forget that you need to go and save this. So shell normal, go save as, it's already called shell normal.png. Save it out to your textures folder. Go back to your shader and make sure that your texture is set to non-color. And then plug it into a normal map and plug the normal map into your material and you can then remove the multi-res. And again, in this case, I might just hit control one and add a subdivision surface just to smooth that out a little bit. And that's all there is to creating normal maps from multi-res modifiers. Happy blending.